Neil Gaiman, creator of The Sandman. There's a lot of fancy on TV at the moment. What makes The Sandman stand out? I think what makes it stand out mostly is it's, it isn't all the same. Um, I mean, the, you know, I love Game of Thrones, but if you take a slice of Game of Thrones and you like it, the rest of Game of Thrones is going to be a lot like that. There will be dragons, there will be fighting, there will be betrayals and there will be boobs and that's what you got for the rest of the thing. For Sandman, we have 10 episodes. Not one of these 10 episodes is anything like any of the other 10 episodes. We're going to take you uh, into the dreamland, we're going to take you to hell, we're going to take you to a serial killers convention in Atlanta, Georgia, we're going to take you all over the world and there are going to be episodes that are really dark and there are episodes that are really light and you know we're going to take you into a diner and do an episode that is some of the darkest horror I've ever been involved in and then epi that's episode five and then episode six comes along and it kind of hugs you and kisses you and makes everything better again. It's a very unique universe. It The first season alone spans 700 years of human history. It features William Shakespeare and Geoffrey Chaucer. It's, uh, it's not, I wouldn't describe it as sci-fi so much as fantasy, but fantasy set in a very grounded 2022. Do you know something? Even though it is fantasy, it's just etched in truth and reality and the human condition. What does it mean to be human about love, loss, family, our deepest fantasies, our deepest fears? I'm gonna steal someone's words here. Someone said it's a story of stories. Um, and the Sandman isn't really about, you know, Morpheus himself. You know, he is the kind of your thread throughout all of these stories and the one constant, but it's about all of these other people that he gets to meet. And I think ultimately it is a reflection of humanity, um, of the things that plague us, of the things that make us, you know, happy, excited, you know, the things that move us as humans. I think it rewrites the rules a little bit, actually. I think that the fact that it's come from a comic book that is so beloved and people have waited for for so long, I think the whole area of dreams is an incredibly... Uh, appropriate and exciting area because I think we do when we dream flit between reality and fantasy in our heads all the time. Morpheus famously has three items that give him his powers. Yes. What three items could you not live without? Water, technically, because I'll die. Okay, my glasses, a ring that is very precious to me. Oh, why is it precious? Can it's you a sentimental meaning, I won't go into it. I suppose a guitar. I've, I've got an uh, uh, electroacoustic, so I've got a, one that you can plug in. I'll play the fool on it, actually. No, I, well, I, you know, rock and roll, really, that was whole, my whole thing. Uh, relatively few chords. <laughs> the laptop. Uh, the iPhone. This is just a sad <laughs> list. Honestly, it's not, it may sound superficial, but my phone, you know, in this world, it's very important. Um, and a pen and a notebook. I was given a puppet from Thunderbirds made in my likeness, and it was the first puppet they'd made since Thunderbirds in the 60s. I think that gives me special powers. An actual physical book in my bag at all times for when those two things don't work. And a hairbrush. Jokes. But there is another life which awaits you when you close your eyes. How many seasons have you got planned? We've got as many as they let us have. And if enough, enough viewers show up, we can go for quite a long while. So we want to do all of it. We want to spin off miniseries. We want, you know, we'll, we would love to make it for as long as they'll have us.